OK, this is what we're going to start our little walk. We're going to find a little creek and walk through the ranges for 4 or 5k, then come out right on the other side into the vastness of the open plains. And the goats, the curse of the land. Nice little creek, we'll follow it through for a few k. It gets a bit rocky and a few little uh, steepy bits uh, later on, but uh, it's pretty smooth going for the first few k anyhow. It's always nice to walk along a track without other footprints. No doubt a lot of people have walked along here at some stage. This is in fact uh, part of a, a pastoral property, so it is effectively private land. We'll respect the land and not uh, make uh, leave any evidence behind that we've been here. But I don't think there's been uh, any sheep or stock on this for a long time. It's just full of goats. Uh, we'll just walk along and enjoy the scenery. As we get further along, the gorge gets a bit steeper. It's not really that super spectacular, but it's not too bad. It's a, well, it has got a name, but uh, it's not really on the tourist list. There's no actual track or signs to it as such. There's the bloody goats. I hate the things. Look at this. It's going to take a munch. It's going to start eating everything. Look at that. It's eating the tundra. They should be exterminated from our natural areas, or well, from all areas, they're not, not needed in Australia. Oh, we'll leave the goats behind, but you can still hear them on the hills, walking along, rolling rocks around. They certainly do more damage than a couple of uh, hikers. Look, there's a cave. There's probably a skull up there, but of course we wouldn't want to disturb that because it could be a uh, significance. And uh, oh, the lovely river, river red gums. They probably get a bit of water every few years when it rains. Must take the drone down here next time and do some drone shots. As long as the GPS doesn't get mixed up and it flies to China. Ah, yes, we're getting a bit cliffy here. Hope it's not dark by the time I get out. Usually I run out of time on these sort of walks. I don't have a GPS, I don't really know where I am, but uh, if you keep walking west, you'll get out to the plains. I like this, it's a natural goat trap. The silly goats think they're, in, they're invincible, walk along the cliff, fall off into this hole, and die. More of them should fall in the hole. And here's another stupid goat. Fell off a cliff. Well, that's about the only really difficult bit. A uh, bit of a scramble around the rocks to get over there. And a bit slippery, I wouldn't want to do it in the wet. Um, obviously be a bit of a, bit of a torrent uh, when there's a big rainstorm. So that's about two thirds through the gorge and we've got to go down that end there, which um, should be uh, okay. We've done the worst of it. And then we'll get out to the plains and then walk back to the Parakilna Road. Now it looks like Switzerland. It doesn't snow here much though. And we've got the Evening sun shining through the mouth of the gorge, shining up the red rocks. It's all very nice. And the sound of the goats walking around. At least there's a few native birds we can hear. And look, we're coming out. After all those hours of walking through the ranges, we're coming out into the plains. Happens fairly quickly actually, you walk through a few hills and bang out in the river flat. And no more hills for about a thousand miles. Well we've finally come out and broke into the, uh, the plains, the open plains. So uh, still a bit of sunlight left. Um, last time I did this, I walked back to Parakilna Road along the edge of the ranges. And, well, I was following the stars, it was a moonless night, and the stars moved anyway. Uh, I got there eventually. Uh, this time there's a micro, little micro moon, 
and I'll also uh, go a bit, uh, go south a bit and uh, find a fence line with a track along it and go along that. Might be a bit easier, I think. Um, so it'll certainly be dark and I think the moon will be down by the time I get back. I've left the bike on the road. So then do the last four kilometres ride back to the car. So it should be all to the good and uh, very good walk, uneventful, luckily. And um, yeah, I enjoyed it more than last time. Uh, the wind was blowing enormously last time and I just, uh, it was a bit disquieting and the tree was gonna blow over and I was just blowing you off things. It was really annoying, so this time beautifully still, we couldn't want a better day. Um, it's gonna be very cold, I think. It's, um, it's got that chill to it. I think once the sun goes down, it's gonna get pretty close to zero. So um, I've got a lot of warm stuff, so I should be okay. I did take stuff in case I had to stay the night, um, warm clothes and uh, fire lighting equipment and uh, enough food and water if that was the case. But uh, I'll be able to walk back, I think, and have a, a nice uh, night walk. Another little cave to visit sometimes, maybe. It's uh, quite easy to walk around here, as you can see. You get your feet spiked by um, spiky twigs and things. But that's not too bad. This is the range looking up towards the north. In the final minutes of the sun. This is the final glitch of the sun. There it is, just gone down. It didn't go green either. And a little micro moon. Well, the sun has set, and uh, I wonder if they didn't get any gain out of that. Nah. There we are. We're recording. Well, the sun set, and uh, we'll have a little snack, and then head back. Uh, hopefully, uh, get home sometime tonight. I'll try it this direction. Ah, there we are. That's um, uh, looking towards the gorge, and. Uh, just the exposure, Matic. Well, uh, sunset, we'll have a little snack, then uh, head on down the road, or the track, or somewhere, or probably just through the through the virgin hinterland and see where we end up, hopefully uh, back at the bike, which is locked up to a post on the road. When I got to the bike, I couldn't find the key, had to walk all the way back. Then weeks later, found the key stuck in some part of clothing I couldn't find at the time, but then there breaks. Oh dear, the fire's going down a bit. I wonder if I can find some more wood. Oh, let's have a look here. Oh, look. The nice railways people have left a nice pile of timber. Old sleepers and bits and pieces. This should keep me going for a while. Just the thing we need. One of the reasons why it's good to camp next to old railway lines. 